So what we're going to do now is start adding some shading and a bit of lighting to our icons just to give it some more depth and make it stand out. So what we're going to do is just grab all these icons here and we're going to make a copy holding shift and option and I'm just going to drag this down just like that. And what I'm going to do is make a few new layers. So I've got two new layers here already made up. One says stroke, one says shading. And what we're going to do is we're going to put these strokes on the top layer. And then we're going to add our shading on this layer here so it doesn't conflict. So as I showed you before, we don't want the colors to go over our stroke. We want our stroke to be on the top and just, you know, have the effects on the actual color. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select these four icons and I'm going to press Control C, Control F. It's going to make a copy and paste it on top. As you can see there, it's just made a copy like that. And what I'm going to do to this is go to my left panel here and click this button here. Or you can press forward slash and it's going to get rid of the feel. So now if I drag this out, you can see it's only the stroke. So what I'm going to do is go to my layers panel on the right here. You'll see there's this little button next to this circle here. And it's like a little square with a color. We're going to drag this color, which means all this is selected, everything in the layer that is selected that we picked. And we're going to drag it up click and drag to the stroke layer. So now you can see, if I move this, it's just our strokes on this layer. So we can turn that on and off. So we're going to leave that there. And I'm going to lock that stroke layer. And then I'm going to go to my color layer again, where we have our fill. And I'm going to turn off the stroke on this side. So you can see you can press the button or forward slash, and I've gotten rid of the stroke here. Now we just got all the fills, and that is under the stroke. So we have our stroke on top and our color layer with the fills. And now we're going to add our shading on this middle layer here. So you want to make sure that the stroke's on, on top, top and the shading is in the middle so we don't conflict. So now what we're going to do is going to go on our shading layer, click that. And what I'm going to do is start adding some shading. So I'm going to press P for the pen tool. It's also located on the left here as well, as we were using before. And I'm going to click. And start just adding some shapes. And make sure you're... Guides are on. And then what I want to do is go to my transparency panel. You can go to window, transparency to open that. And you can see here I have this shape here. And I'm just going to press I for the eyedropper and just select this color here. And I'm going to go to multiply. You can even do this dark color here and do multiply for that. So I'll just leave that on multiply, and you can see it's added a bit of a shadow. And what I'd like to do is hold Option and Shift or Alt and Shift, drag this across, and I'm going to go to my Transform panel on the left here, click the menu, and you can see you can flip horizontal, flip vertical. We're going to flip horizontal, and what it's done is actually flip that shape. So now we have the exact same shape on this left side as on the right side. So we've added a bit of shading there. And I'm going to do the same up here. So you can see we're just going to click and connect the shape. And then once again, we're going to go to multiply. Make sure we select this color. Multiply. I'm going to copy it and go back to transform and flip horizontal. And then we're going to drag it into place and make sure it snaps into place. So you can see we've already added a bit of shading and it's already taken effect and being really cool. So that's awesome. And we'll go ahead and add some shading on the next one, but we'll add a bit of lighting as well, so we're going to do the same thing, but instead of doing multiply, we're actually going to add, like, use screen or um, color dodge, it works really well as well, so I'm just going to click again, using the stroke as a guide, and then I'm going to just drag this, and the reason why I see how it's the strokes are on top, you, you can actually draw behind it and it's not going to affect it. Así que veamos so, see, color color screen, color is pretty cool. Sobre exponer color está bastante bien. Uh, but you can see that it's Pero mixing with this one here, so I'm going to have to drag that mezclando, down a bit. Se está mezclando con este de aquí, por lo que voy a arrastrar esto hacia abajo un poco. And then, Luego lo copio copy otra vez, again. por lo que obtengo esto. So I have that.
y ya hemos añadido algo de luz a esto. No vamos a añadir luz aquí abajo porque este es el interior de la tienda. Así so que este es el interior y este es el so interior. No habrá so demasiada luz unless you have like a lamp or candle or something in there, but that's cool. Como puedes ver, le hemos dado so algo de luz. You can see it's added a bit of depth. It's pretty cool. And same thing for lámpara. the lantern. Seguiremos usando la herramienta cuenta gotas. We'll go through seguro, through asegúrate de que estás en la capa de cuenta gotas. You know, just using the eyedropper tool. Modo Vamos a ver qué tal se ve desde aquí. Vamos a ver qué tal se ve desde aquí. Vamos a ver qué tal se ve desde aquí. Vamos a ver qué tal se ve desde aquí. Vamos a ver qué tal se ve desde aquí. Vamos a ver qué tal se ve desde aquí. Make sure you're on the right layer. Simplemente estoy copiando y pegando yeah, we'll cuadrados. Multiply. Y luego mantengo alt y arrastro el cuadro desde un lado. You can see, y just copying, pasting squares, and then I'm just holding bueno, alt and dragging the box out from the side, and it's going to keep it um, constrained. Así es como normalmente creo mis iconos, especialmente si son iconos que tengan trazos gruesos. A veces serán solo rellenos, especially if I'm doing icons that have, you know, heavy strokes. Sometimes it will just be like fills and stuff. Voy a seleccionar estos dos y luego lo recorto. So it depends on the style of icon you're really doing. Solo para que no interfieran aquí. I'm just gonna get these two and then minus this out with the shape builder tool. De hecho, voy a hacerlo. Just so it's not interfering there. Lo voy a hacer en rojo. Pondré este color. I might even color this. Actually, I'll make it. Yeah, I'll make it red. Add a bit of color there. And then even might add a bit of. Bueno, estamos imaginando que la luz proviene desde abajo, por lo que viene en esta dirección. So you were imagining the light's coming straight down. So it's coming down this way. Vamos a usar esto como reflejo y añadiremos algo. And then we'll add. Ya sabes, puede estar bastante desorganizado en la parte de detrás. No tiene por qué ser algo limpio, ya que de todos modos... Puede ser muy bien en la parte de detrás. No tiene que ser demasiado limpio. Porque no lo verás de ninguna manera. Y puedes añadir puntos con la herramienta pluma. Pulsa M para ir a la herramienta marca y simplemente voy a arrastrar para crear un cuadro. Luego usamos el cuentagotas pulsando I, hacemos el Como ves, tengo algo de luz y un poco de sombra aquí. Está muy bien. Sweet, so we've got some lighting, got a bit of shading here. It's looking good. Como ves, está un poco plano aquí. Puedes ver la diferencia, de hecho. La diferencia es grande. So you can see it looks flat here. Así que vamos a añadir esto aquí detrás de la difference. almohada. Tienes difference. que imaginártelo para ser realista con tus iconos. So we're going to add it here behind the pillow. Están las cosas delante. So you've got to imagine, like, be realistic luz. with your icons. Like, is it, puedes ver aquí is it things que behind or in front? No debería tener demasiada luz porque está detrás. Está debajo. Is there, like, areas where there would be more light? Y... So you can see here, obviously, this bag wouldn't have much light because it's behind, it's under. And we're going to focus on this bit here. I'm going to make it look like there's like scenes in the bag. So we're going to add some shadows rapidly and we can obtain many variations. There's a lot of quickly like adding shapes. Many colors and styles. You can actually can get more out of it. There's so many different styles of icons, you know, like so many different colors and styles. Yeah, there's so many different styles of icons. 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 Voy a ir aquí y copio este color. And then once again we'll add some shading here. So click. I'm just holding shift there to get straight lines. Si es demasiado puedes disminuir la opacidad. And once again I'm just going to go over here and copy this color here. La opacidad aquí abajo. And if it's too much you can actually drop the opacity. If you're on the transparency panel you can add an opacity bar here. You can actually go in there and drop that percentage. If you feel like it's too much. If you want a more subtle feel to it. And then Control D, and that will copy it. Queremos asegurarnos de que es consistente, de que tiene el mismo tamaño y ese tipo de cosas. So you want to make sure it's consistent. Make sure it's the same size and stuff like that. Ah, 
está todo bien. Voy a añadir un poco de sombra aquí arriba también. Sí, looks good. Oh, well, well, we're shading up here too. Genial. Awesome, awesome. Esto está realmente genial. Ahora en nuestra mochila puedes ver cómo se sale de esta zona. Un truco really rápido great. es seleccionar. So now onto our backpack now. Shift con la herramienta selección directa y hacer clic en los puntos. Verás you can see how it sticks out here. Redondeada. Quick trick is you can select, si hold shift, shift este the direct selection tool and click on the points. And you'll see this little round corner. If you're in CC, ves, you get this little point. And you can drag it in. It's going to round that off. Y luego like voy a poner este so you can see how we both ran off those two sides. Which is pretty neat. And then I'm just going to get this multiple color here. Luego puedo simplemente copiarlo en el otro lado. I want to go through under the stroke. And create these shadows and then I can just copy it across. Para conseguir est todos estos detalles adicionales, no tienes que estresarte. Solo échale un poco de tiempo extra. No, so y to get all this extra detail, you don't have to, you know, stress. If you just put Esto a bit of extra time bien. into it, you can create some cool stuff. Luego, vamos a uh, añadir un poco de sombreado. Yeah, that looks pretty. Good. Looks looking alright. Puedo I'm copiar esto, shading. volver a transformar, voltear ver vertical. Como hicimos antes, y una vez Copy más this. go back to a transform flip color. vertical, like we did before. Then once again, do color dodge there. Puedes añadir incluso algo de luz a esto. En realidad, he reducido el amarillo porque no quedaba muy bien. La opción trama queda bien. Vamos a copiar esto al otro lado. Y en realidad voy a so seleccionar sobre exponer color. Screen looks nice there. Copy that across. I shall put on color dodge. Queda un poco blanco, pero está bien. Me parece That's que vamos a hacernos, deshacernos de esta sombra porque es la hebilla. We might actually y get añadimos esta sombra aquí, shading. ya que esto This está like detrás. Get rid of that Asegúrate de que cubres este verde más claro. And we'll add this shadow here. Multiplicar. Y perfecto. Uh, make sure we cover this light green. Multiply. Puedes añadir incluso un poco de sombra aquí alrededor de estas esquinas inferiores, como hicimos antes para añadir un poco de sombra debajo de, la, de esta hebilla. Genial. Ahora puedes ver que le hemos dado un poco de profundidad. Puedes ver la diferencia de la versión plana y luego con el sombrero. Así que añádele este toque de pasión, de sabor, y quedará genial. Flat, Simplemente usando multiplicar, transparencia, así so se ya sabes. Usando los colores que tenemos aquí, aplicando las técnicas awesome. sencillas, puedes crear algunos Just iconos muy bonitos. Multiply, transparency, multiply, and color dodge. Lo que and vamos a hacer ahora es mostrar cómo podemos recolorear estos iconos, ya que a veces querrás mostrar tus iconos con otro aspecto diferente. Así que está bien crear un color diferente, por lo que vamos a crear una capa now, negra y la llamamos rojo. Because sometimes you, you want your colors or your icons to show in a different, you know, visual manner. Um, so it's good to create a different color. So what we're going to do, I'm going to make y a new layer, que... just call it. Um, sí. Vamos a usar esta paleta de colores red. que he creado aquí previamente. Voy a seleccionar estos And iconos otra vez, some, pero yeah, me aseguro de que color las capas están beforehand. bloqueadas. I'm going to select these icons again, again, but make sure the layers are unlocked. Todos, make sure you select all of it. Shift y arrastra hacia abajo. Select it all. Ahora hemos Hold, una Alt, and Shift. Y lo que vamos a hacer es seleccionar todo esto, ir a guía de color, hago so clic en esta copy pequeña guía de color aquí abajo a la and derecha. And now what we're going to do vamos a hacer is we're going to select all these. Y verás este cuadro. Go to Color Guide and click this little color wheel on the bottom on the right Ahora here. Ahora puedes ver que los colores se han cambiado. Tienes que asegurarte de que el marca es la opción recolorear la ilustración aquí abajo up. a la izquierda. So you can see now the ahora vamos a usar funky. este grupo de colores de la derecha. Por lo que como art, ves, usamos este, 
este grupo original now we're going to use this color group on the right here so you can see we use this original no. color group but we're going to use this red and brown one and what you can actually do is you see you've got these four rows so what it does is substitutes the color that we previously used with the new color that we just selected on this color group and we can press this button on the left on the right and if you keep clicking it it'll do different variations and switch them around which is so cool you can get some cool effects in different like styles and colors um, or you can just drag the colors where you want you can see I'm just dragging this color I want this brown to be on the stroke like that but I want it to be a bit darker so you can actually go down here and edit that color Como puedes ver aquí, make it darker as you can see no there. It might, it might not show up properly, so you'll have to click recolor and recolor again and it will work. So that looks pretty Está nice. Bien. And you, know, you can play around with this. Si que tenga you want un to look red. Rojo, así, está bastante bien. Así que lo que podemos hacer ahora es hacer clic en OK. Like that. That looks pretty sweet. Luego, so no what vamos we can do now is press estos nuevos OK. Que hemos hecho en el color por lo que and then we don't want to save these new changes to the color, so we're just going to press no. But now you can see it's actually changed the colors and we have a new icon set or a new set of different styles and you, know, you can call this red icons or fire icons or you know, summer set, set or whatever you want. So you can really get some cool looks and different variations when you just play around with that color tool. And all it is is going to color guide and playing with the color wheel and you can get some nice looking icons.